Okay, this will be video number one for the interval of convergence. Now, when we're talking about a series, we're trying to find where it converges. Because if you remember, like if we're thinking about sine, if we're trying to find where it converges, um, well, sine actually, well, just a bad example. But say it converges, if you're writing a second degree Taylor polynomial, it's going to converge right here. Um, so what I'm trying to find is I'm trying to find where that interval is. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the ratio test to tell me. Because if you remember, the ratio test says that the absolute value of the ratio, if it's less than 1, then it converges. Everywhere it le it's less than 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the ratio test. And we're going to find and we're going to force it to be less than 1. And that's going to give us our interval of convergence. Um, sometimes it's easier if I just do one and you just watch. All right, so we're going to do our ratio test. And remember, everywhere there's an n, we're going to put n plus 1. Not where there's an x, but just where there's an n. So we're going to do the limit as n goes to infinity of x to the n plus 1 over, let's call that n plus, well, we can just do the square root of n plus 1. Um, times the square root of n over x to the n. Um, I'm going to break it apart. Limit as n goes to infinity. That's x to the n times x to the 1 times the square root of n over the square root of n plus 1 times x to the n. The x to the n's are going to cancel out. And what I'm going to do, this limit only deals with the n's. So that x, I can actually pull that completely to the front. I can say the absolute value of x times the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of the square root of the n over the square root of n plus 1. Well, this limit, I can evaluate this. This is 1. So it's just the absolute value of x times 1, or which is just the absolute value of x. So this is the solution to my ratio. I'm going to take this answer and I'm going to force it to be less than 1 because that's where my ratio test converges. This is my ratio test. This is where it converges. And then I can solve just a regular old absolute value equation. Um, to solve an absolute value equation, remember that looks like a C, so it's a conjunction. So I would say x is less than 1 and x is greater than negative 1. Or I could just write it together. And this is my interval. Now what I have to do next, the very last thing I have to do is I have to test my endpoints. Because I know that this is the radius where it converges, this is the interval, but I'm not sure about the endpoints. I actually can fill those in to my original and determine, and I'll do this on a different page. So I come over here and I say at x equals negative 1. And I fill a negative 1 in to where my x is. Okay. This is an alternating series. Limit goes to zero. If it's alternating and the limit goes to zero, the bottom's getting bigger faster than the top, then this is going to converge. So at negative one, it's equal. If it converges, you put an equal sign. Then I test the other one. At x equals positive one, that's a positive one to the n over the square root of n, or one over the square root of n. This is a p-test. Um, for the p-series to converge, p has to be greater than 1. p is 1 half, um, because this is really n to the 1 half, so this one is going to diverge. If it diverges, then I do not put an equal sign. So uh, this is my answer. This is my interval of convergence. It can also be written as negative 1 to 1. And this is the preferred way to write it. That They won't mark this wrong, but this is preferred. Um, let's look at b. Let's take that to a whole new page. And we'll stop this video on B. Um, let's do it again. So I'm going to do the limit as n goes to infinity of everywhere there's an n, I put n plus 1. So it's n plus 1 cubed times x minus 5 to the n plus 1 over, because it's really dividing. Um, this is the first one that hasn't had a bottom, times x minus 5 to the n. Well, I'm going to rewrite that the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 cubed times x minus 5 to the n times x minus 5 to the 1 
n cubed times x minus 5 to the n. Well, x minus 5 to the n's cancel. Um, please remember that the limit is in terms of n. The x minus 5 does not have anything to do with the n's. I can actually pull it to the front um, and say the absolute value of x minus 5 times the limit is n goes to infinity of n plus 1 cubed over n cubed. Now let's look at the degree. Let's evaluate the limit. If we look at the degree, that goes to 1 because the degrees are the same. I look at the front coefficients. This is going to be n cubed plus some crap, and I don't care what it is, over n cubed. So that's 1 over 1. So this is 1. So it's just the absolute value of x minus 5 times 1. But I'm, I'm not going to put that. I mean, I could, but it's not necessary. And I'm going to force this to be less than 1 because that's where the ratio converges. And then I'm going to solve my, my absolute value inequality. So it's x minus 5 is less than 1 and x minus 5 is greater than negative 1. So I add 5, x is less than 6, and add 5, x is greater than 4. So I know that it's going to be between 4 and 6, but I need to test those two endpoints. So at x equals 4, so I'm going to come way back up here, um, I guess I could test it here, at x equals 4, I fill a 4 in where the x is, so it's the series n cubed of 4 minus 5 to the n, so that's n cubed times negative 1 to the n. It's alternating, but the limit does not go to 0, so that's going to diverge, and then at x equals 6, n cubed times 6 minus 5 is 1 to the n. That's not even alternating. The limit doesn't go to 0. Remember, if the limit goes to 0, that's your test for divergence. It automatically diverges. Um, so both of them are going to diverge. So my interval of convergence is from 4 to 6. No brackets, no equal signs. Um, it's just this. Now, if it asks you for the radius of convergence, Emergence. That's just saying, if you were looking at your number line, 4, 5, 6, it's telling you that it's here. Well, the radius of that would be from the center to the end. So the radius would be 1. Um, and we'll look at that a little bit more. And you can look for interval of convergence number 2.